Welcome back everyone. Maybe you've heard of how important it is to get pre-approved before you buy a home, but what does that mean exactly? And how do you go about doing it? Joining me now, mortgage expert Tyler Osby and behind garage door number one, Tyler, we are talking about very basic step number one to getting that pre-approval or pre-qualification before we even dive into those terms. So what do you need to do? Where do you start? Start talking with a lender. Right? Yes. And the process is generally starting with a loan application, which you can do over the phone, you can do online, you could even do in person. Mm -hmm. But get them the basics, right? So yes. they can do the number crunching for you. Yes. Um, once they get a picture of what you've got going on financially, they mm -hmm. can start guiding you through the process. And the first step is what we call pre-qualification. Based mm -hmm. on what you're saying, here's what it looks like. Okay. So let's look behind garage door number two, where we hear these terms pre-approval, pre-qualification, mm -hmm. what do these mean exactly? Uh, let's start with the differences. What's the difference between somebody who's pre-approved for a mortgage loan and somebody who has a pre-qualification for a mortgage loan? It's a very stark difference that's often misunderstood. Okay. And, and frankly, it's like misunderstood by people in our industry, sure. right? Um, so when you're pre-qualified, the way I look at it is it's based on what you're saying, this is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But when you go into underwriting and you submit all your documentation to someone, they're looking through it a lot more thoroughly and that's what we want to do to get someone pre-approved mm -hmm. is look through all the same things that an underwriter will and make sure there's no surprises. Like if you've got someone who says, yeah, I work full time, 40 hours a week, and then you get a pay stub that's 36 hours, you start asking some questions, yes. right? Yes. Um, and sometimes it'll adjust the numbers. It could totally impact even being qualified at all. Mm -hmm. So it, it's my suggestion that to start a conversation, pre-qualified is great. It's fine. Get pre-approved though, because okay. if you start looking at houses before you get pre-approved, you might fall in love with something that you can't buy. Right, pre-approved basically in my, in my head means you're probably giving your lender more paperwork yes. to verify the information that you've talked about. A pre-qualification might just be kind of a conversation or information-based qualification. Should be. Should be. Should be. Yes. And it's, it's surprising. There's a lot of, you know, kind of malpractice, if you will, of people yeah. saying you're pre-approved mm -hmm. without getting any documentation. but. The, the most common issue of people running into surprises, you hear people like having nightmare loan experiences, mm -hmm. it's because they didn't ask for enough documentation up front. And I think unfortunately loan officers sometimes feel a little bit timid to, to pull for some more information because they get some negative feedback from the yes. client. But enough bad phone calls, I mean, I've been doing this for a while. I just started getting smart and saying, you know, these calls suck, saying that people don't qualify. Mm -hmm. Let's just start doing it right up front. Yeah. Um, so just, just work with somebody who's going to get the documentation. Let's go to garage door number three. I think at the end of the day, if you're buying a house and you want to borrow tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, <laughs> you might have to anticipate that there are some hoops yeah. to jump through at the end of the day. Okay, so you've got your pre-approval letter, your pre-qualification letter. Now what? What does this allow you to do as a home buyer? Well, when you go to make an offer, mm -hmm. um, which is obviously like that's the next big move, right? Mm -hmm. You want to have a pre-approval because you want to know that when this deal comes together, you can actually go through with it. Yeah. It's good for you to know it as a buyer and it's good for a seller to know it when they're selling you their home. Mm -hmm. um, a true like pre-approval is generally good for about 120 days. Mm -hmm. And the reason they come up with that time frame is because a credit report is good for 120 days. Right. Um, but you know, the reality is I always tell clients if something changes with your income, your expenses, your assets, it's going to change things. Mm -hmm. So just communicate with your lender, like we always end with, yes. to make sure that there aren't any surprises. If there's something that changes in your financial situation, there is no such thing as over communicating. Right. Um, but you know, it, it, just make sure you're asking those questions anytime you're considering making any adjustments. Okay, Tyler, great advice as always. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having me. If you would like to share what you have learned here today or maybe check out some of our other HomeWise topics that we have covered, and we have covered a lot of them, be sure to visit who13.com.